Right. Can somebody talk? Hello. Yes. Brilliant. Hello, little old lady. That is fantastic. We are all my, because uh, my, uh, my pod isn't in the middle and it will annoy me for the rest of the um, day. Oh, that looks like everybody is in the right position um, and ready to go. Hello, everyone. Welcome um, to part two of our second adventure, second session in our Spell Jammer campaign. Um, the party have actually made it into wild space now. So this is when the fun actually starts. And hopefully by the end of this part, so there's another two chapters to do. Chapter one's done. We got chapter two and chapter three. And then the characters will increase a level and get slightly better ready for the next part. Um, Captain Kangaroo will be joining us, not this week, but hopefully next time we play, and um, bringing in another character to make a fivesome. And yeah, and we'll they'll add another dynamic. I think he's going to, wants to play a, a spell jammer race. So it seems um, appropriate that he's going to be joining you while you're in wild space. Um, so yes, yeah, so Captain Kangaroo probably been playing a cleric, but what you're more probably more interested in is what are the players playing tonight? Um, and Pickles, Mr. Pickles has internet connection issues, so we got Muscle Pickles covering in and standing in for him. Um, this week but he is here and he will start off by saying who he is and who he will be playing tonight off you go mr pickles yes i am mr pickles the one who pays a lot of money for internet that doesn't really seem to work most of the time if you guys can yell at me if i start sounding robotic or anything um i'm playing jennifer eben um a human druid that follows the circle of the wildfire. So her general beliefs are that things should be set ablaze because that brings down to ashes, fertilizes new growth. And without that that blaze, you can't have new life. It, it, that, that, she probably believes it dips into necromancy at that point. You're trying to <laughs> not, not allow the cycle to, to go properly. Um, but as you all can tell, she uses a lot of fire. That's her primary method of dealing with issues. Um, she does also have other spells that she's likely to use. Um, so she's not all fire, but there's a lot of fire there. She always smells like campfire, regardless of whether or not she's burning things. Um, and that puts people in polite company off a little bit to her. Uh, she doesn't really use any weapons, but she sometimes has a shield. Um, a shield that often burns up, so she has to replace them often. And with that, I'm just going to toss the mic over to... Uh, my newest comrade, Matt B. Uh, hello, I am Matt. I'm playing Ty, who is a, a wood elf monk. He's a, a, a smaller guy than the usual elves that you would see. But for a wood elf, he's pretty average size. He's about 5'8", so not too small. Um, he's very much in tune with nature because of his wood elf background he loves nature he's grown up in nature has a deep appreciation for it uh tries to always be in flow with nature when he's moving around it almost seems like he doesn't have any bones because he's always just like in uh, flowing in movement very fluid um he likes to do a lot of sort of tricks likes to walk on his hands do flips he he'll uh he's a very active character mm. um and that's pretty much it. So I'll uh, I'll move it along to Medivac. Oh, boy, thank you, Matt. Hi, everybody. I'm Medivac. Um, I'm playing a Solvar Truth Seeker. You can pretty much notice him as soon as he walks into the room because he's just shy of eight feet tall. He's a Goliath. <laughs> yes. Um, he's grey-skinned, um, tattooed. Uh, you'll probably also notice he's only wearing a loincloth. But that's personal <laughs> preference, really. Um, he's very good with his great axe. He, he loves to um, he loves to swing it at, at everything, which is why he got kicked out of his village and told to uh, grow up and learn to be sensible. And yeah, that's why he's, he's a truth seeker. He's seeking the truth of life, his life. Um, he's pretty much the go-to front man 
of the group and everybody knows not to stand near him because when he swings there is a chance that anybody around him may get hit um so the the party do know to um to not approach from the sides and to always attack from the rear not his rear the name is rear <laughs> that, that'd be weird um yeah um he, he's trying to cook um so he he does um he does have uh, his, his cooking skills um, but yeah, that's about it, really. And with that, I shall pass on to Sugar Wugger. Hi, guys. I'm Sugar Wugger, and I am playing Pericleus Simmersut, who is a trickster rogue. He's the smallest member of the party at um, just a smidgen over three foot. Uh, he's got immaculately maintained hair and beard, sorry, a beard and moustache. Um, but the rest of his facial hair is sort of unkept. He's got unkept um, eyebrows and a hell of a lot of ear hair um, sticking out. He's he's good nature. Uh, he loves puzzles and and mysteries. He's also very skilled in um, in history. And if he doesn't know the answer to a certain question, then you can probably bet that he knows someone who does or somewhere that he can find that answer out. When it comes to combat, well, he prefers to hover on the fringes of the, the melee and, and strike when the um, opportunity presents itself going toe-to-toe with, with combatants. Um, he also has another love, which is um, tinkering. And he's extremely adept at producing items to make the simplest of tasks overcomplicated. And I shall pass on to our inwills. <laughs> to our inwills. Thank you so much. I'm going to be the dungeon master today, and I will be guard um, guiding the players through wild space and on to their next. Um, encounter. Just to remind you that the um, party do have one inspiration dice each, or, or inspiration die, should I say. So this is uh, a 1d6 that they can roll to add on to any um, saving throw or to hit dice they to hit roll that they want. Um, they have one of those per session. So and they do not carry over. So if you didn't use yours last session, you do not have two today. And um, but if you want your favorite character or player to have two dice, then you can give them an extra inspiration die by donating one pound or ten a hundred bitties to the stream, and just saying in your comment um, who you would like to give the die to, and they will be able to take that on. Of course, if you are planning on playing this game or this module um, in the future, then turn us off now. Do not watch because there will be spoilers. So be aware of that. But if you... Your, your, your voice is going to be choppy. Uh, that's I'm all right. I'm going to ask whether or not anybody else was good. Because um, Chuggerwuggers is going choppy for me. Ah. Um. Are you, are you leeched his bandwidth? Yeah, I, I'm actually next door to him. That's why. <laughs> How is it now? Is it all right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's only it's very it's occasionally it goes. Yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty random. Yeah. Bit, yeah. Um, the oh, right. Where was I up to? Um, giving stuff to do. With oh the yes, race. yes. Um, so the party had a rather interesting adventure last time they've recently come back from a dungeon crawl they were loaded with goodies and gold etc when they suddenly realized that the town that they were in was being invaded by what appeared to be very tall crystalline vibes vines and um, blight monsters the party defended the rest of the town as they went um, through the town to the docks. At the docks, there seemed to be a somewhat of, of a kerfuffle and the party yet again made the, the baddies know, the villains know that they are the good people and not to be messed with. 
and then they hopped onto a boat or a ship in order to get away and was quite shocked when the the galleon um, raised up above the level of the sea and started to fly upwards and upwards and then eventually broke through the atmosphere into wild space. So, yeah, that's the first time that many of the party have been into wild space. If your background allows, has provided you with some information that you know about wild space, by all means, word that work that into the narrative from this point onwards. Uh, apart from that, I would like to inform you that on the um, moon dancer that is the name of the ship um there are also approximately um 60 commoners um that six zero six zero yeah um they're below decks luckily about six of them are competent sailors so they have almost like taken up positions around the moon dancer to aid with the sailing um they Many of them, there's some um, young children, there's families, there's some distressed families as well who might have lost a loved one or have suddenly found themselves um, alone. There is also your captain, um, Elena um, Sartel, also says that they do have a full cargo hold. And so, does anybody have any questions before we start the session? Um, yeah, I do, actually. Yeah, go for it. So, um, just rewinding a little bit. So, we uh, we got off the docks and we came on. I'm assuming, you know, Ty welcomed the people that were shouting his name with open hands. Oh, Very yes. Happy. Yeah. Was, you know, shaking hands, kissing babies, doing the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> The babies were sort of like lowered down to you. Um, it was just having, <laughs> having a, a great time. Yeah. And then the boat started moving forward. And suddenly Tai, who has always felt very firm on the ground, didn't feel so <laughs> firm anymore. He started feeling a little bit Ooh, sick. A bit peaky. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, he, he started slowly stumbling towards the, the railing of the beginning over and you know, whatever he ate earlier <laughs> came, came out. out. Yeah. So he, he emptied his stomach over the um, edge of the galleon, which brought a whole load of amusement to some of the tr worthy sailors, those sailors who have been on the high seas before. And even Captain Elena sort of like lets out a, a, a joyous laugh and sort of like comes over to you and pats you quite vigorously on the back, causing another emptying of your <laughs> stomach and, and sort of like laughs and says, don't worry, young kid, you'll be fine. You'll be fine once we get up. Up in, uh, up in the air. Don't worry. You know, uh, I, I, I feel awful. It, it, my head is so dizzy. I feel like we're floating. I feel like we're not anymore. Yeah. And she, she sort of like says, yeah, that'll be right, she says. Have a look overboard. And as you do look overboard, you suddenly see your vomit and the sea suddenly racing um, away from the boat as the or the ship as it gets higher and higher. She says, don't worry, you soon, you'll soon find your sea legs. Well, should I see your space legs what, once we get up higher? Uh, and he'll he'll grab onto the railing as firm as he can, just tr trying not to fall off and trying to find his his grip again. Yeah, fantastic. Um, anyone else having issues? Pericles has has been on a on a on a ship before. Um, he's he's fairly well travelled on um, Faerun, but um, the initial taking off of the boat, leaving um, leaving the the water. Uh, initially, he's surprised, very surprised, looking around, uncertain what's happening. Um, but that quickly turns to amazement. And then 
you almost see it crossing his eye. He, he's he starts to think. He's he's wanting to know how it's how it's done. How how has this ship been able to um, to to take off? And you, you hear him you hear him talking almost to himself, saying, "Well, it, it could be it could be this. It it it, it must it must be magic. Um, if not, it must be some type of." Um, gnomish technology that that's uh, allowing it to um to do this um and he, he's he's looking around for um for somebody who's not busy who he could probably go and um and start to um ask questions to yeah and i, I think the the person who is probably uh, available is um captain elena herself um, which we'll we'll go to that narrative in just one second. Um, Sol, and, I ask one more question. Yeah, by all means. Um, when Ty was hanging over the railing, did he see if the crystallized finds were they just like only in the town, or were they? What was that happening all over the place? Yeah, so that's that's my. I'm about to read a bit of narrative or or okay. give you the information for that so but you'll definitely see it over the side um and yep. does um sol and um yep. jennifer Sol's yeah. never been on a boat before so you'll see him just stood in the middle near the mast it's sort of like a puzzlement on his face and then that little bit of an oh and then as it lifts up, he'll, he'll have a little smile on his face. Like, Ooh, and it, I didn't know boats did this sort of thing. This is this is good. I've never been on a boat before, and and you just see him looking around with this, with a little um, happy smile on his face because it's it it it's giving that little bit of a feel in the middle of his stomach. Oh, you know, like when you go on a swing and you get to a certain, yeah, uh, yeah. He looks very happy. He does very happy. And um, Jennifer, um, I first question, Jennifer, are those antlers on your token, are they part of you or part of your headdress? Headdress. Oh, that's all right. Then. Yeah. Fully human. Um, <laughs> that, that's human classic what, even. Nice. Yeah. Is there anything that Jennifer would like to say or do? Uh, yeah, Jennifer, I think, is the most aloof of this group about this entire experience that's happening. Um, she's seen many strange things in, in the woods, and so this is just merely <laughs> smoke flying up into the air. It, things happen. So yeah. she's going to try and find lodgings for our group to make sure that we'll be able to stay somewhere on the, the boat that's uh, okay. moving our status. Yeah. So as you all start moving in your various directions, I'll read the next part of the narrative for you. Standing on the deck of the Moon Dancer, you look overboard to see scores of crystalline vines erupting from the surface of your world all over every vi place that you can see. Crystal vines are erupting and heading up skywards. Some of the vines reaching high enough to break through the clouds even after you have passed through them. Without a lot of warning, you find yourself sailing through a void filled with colourful gases and blinking stars. A school of space-dwelling fish swims past your ship on the starboard side. Welcome to wild space, said Captain Sattel, sweeping her arms widely. That was a close thing down there. Blast if I know what those vines are or how to get rid of them. Maybe somebody at the Rock of Brow might know. And she looks over um, at you and sort of like casts her eyes about and almost like awaits for any questions, but also time for you to look around the ship. So, um, Perry, this might be a, a time for you to ask your question. So Perry looks up at her because he's only three foot and um, and says and says, well, th "Thank you very much for uh, rescuing um, us and uh, taking all the town folk that you uh, that you could. Um, absolutely fantastic vessel. 
uh, no Mr. Design? Oh, no, no, this this will be um, human design. Yeah, the Moon Dancer is one of the finest galleons across wild space. Indeed, there be many tales of how far we have journeyed across wild space and the encounters we have had. No gnomes could build something like this. Well, well I'm, I'm, I'm quite certain no gnomes, no gnomes could have. Uh, could I... Could I ask a bit more about the the, the fundamentals involved in keeping the ship of fundamentals? Fundamentals. She she sort of like gives out a hearty laugh as she rocks her head back. She says, "I know I don't know anything about fundamentals." <laughs> she said, "You need to talk to Flapjack. Flapjack is the person who knows all about." fundamentals and she sort of like uh, laughs out and sort of like reaches down and taps you on the head and sort of like gestures to you all to start um, engaging in ship type duties after she has given you a brief guided tour of what you are actually on so I'm going to transfer you to um, the deck of the ship okay the deck of the ship has dynamic lighting on it so it will restrict your views um, however there is light on the deck okay so you can see that's fine you don't need any light or anything like that so if you just give me um a couple of clicks so I can pick up your um, cap, your um, tokens. And this would be a good time to say that you will be able to have um, a short rest. Um, so you don't have to take the, the short rest if you don't wish to. Um, if you would much prefer to just um, heal or do whatever you wish like that then that is absolutely fine um, completely and up to you so what what is going to be um, I'm not saying that you'll go and take an hour's rest right this minute but it'll be a good time to start thinking about it um, once you've had your guided tour so I'm going to bring you across to the um, deck plan. And if you could just all let me know what you can see at the present moment in time. Uh, a square with some ladders going up and a hatch down the middle. Okay. And can you see the captain? Um, yes. Um, I can't yep. see Medivac though. That's because he's behind it, the shadow. Explains, oh, is he behind yeah, that? Great. Oh, I'm <laughs> oh, yeah, he's behind. <laughs> yeah, which explains why captain. Yeah. Um, no, I can see the captain. Sorry, captain. It's because there's, there's a like, yeah. Ooh. Yes. That's weird, isn't it? So you should have dynamic lighting on, so it should be we have dynamic lighting. Yes, I can see everybody, and yeah. Yeah. Okay then. If you go around I'm the pole, it's, it's like a lighthouse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Um, <laughs> Spin the mast. Just to let you know, um, I'm going to click to um, tell you where there are doors um, as well, just so you know. So obviously you can see the um, these stairs here, yeah? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And these stairs here. They both go up to the forecastle. Um, on the forecastle, there's two ballistas um, ready to fire out forward. Um, they both seem to be absolutely fine. There seems to be nothing wrong with them, but there's no crew around them um, at all. Um, the, there is a, a door here. And what I'm going to do is just mark on with a tiny little line where the doors are here and here yeah 
Okay, and then there's a, a middle set of stairs here that goes down um, to below the main deck. Which was the I'm middle set of stairs, here. something there. That, this one here? Yeah. Okay, um, yeah. You can see over the cargo hold, um, which is the square, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I, I'll probably be lagging for some reason. Um, um, yeah, so underneath there, just so you know, when you look down, you can see in the cargo hold, there is um, a total of um, a dozen mules, a, a dozen donkeys down there that the moon dancers seem to be um, transporting from one place to another. Uh, when you look down, you can actually see them and they sort of like seem to be tethered, but they seem to be in very close quarters. And you probably decide that the, the smell is going to be quite unbearable um, depending how long you're actually going to be um, on this um, ship. Okay, so at the um, back... Um, there are two sets of um, stairs that go up to the stern castle and the stern castle has on it and I apologize if I pronounce this incorrectly I had to look it up um, what it is uh, a Mongolian a Mongolian a man I'll write it a Mongolian um, a, a Mongolian yeah um, does anybody know without Googling it? No idea. Isn't it like a little trebuchet type thing? Yeah, it is. It, it's a trebuchet, a friction trebuchet. Um, so like a catapult on the back of the um, ship. Um, you suddenly realise that this probably, the ballistas and this trebuchet is probably used um, for ship-to-ship -ship combat. However, you do see that the trebuchet is broken. It's smashed. It looks like it desperately needs repair. It doesn't look like it's in working condition at all. And the captain, when she shows you up there, she says, uh, she says, I was try waiting to get some wood for my trebuchet there. Uh, she says... It's a lot easier to get word on your worlds than some of the other worlds out here. Um, there is also at the back uh, another door um, here. So the door at the back um, leads to what appears to be her um, chain, her Captain's quarters are here at the front. Um, oh, there's ping again, so I, I'm lagging like anything here, so I do apologise. Can you still hear me or yeah. not? Yeah, no, we can still hear yeah. you. Um, so this, where, through this door here, um, I'm trying to ping, but can you see that? No, no, we're seeing the pings, yeah. Yeah, um, that seems to be the captain um, quarters. But through the back door to the stern this is where captain introduces you to flapjack and flapjack appears to be floating in a rather ornate silver chair with um purple seat cushions and you can see that it's he has something on his head and there appears to be almost like some magic circles happening on the ground. And you suddenly realise that you have never seen anybody like Flapjack. Flapjack is like something you've never seen ever in your life and i'm going to share with you um a picture um of him is if roll 20 will let me okay here he comes so it'll appear in your um journals 
me just say to all players. And hopefully now you can see what Flapjack looks like. Yep. Indeed. What in yep. the world? Um, I'm just bringing him out onto the, um, so I can show the, um, the stream as well. So yeah, he, the captain introduces him as a, a flump. And he seems to be, he seems to be almost like jellyfish in style. He has tentacles that seem to be um, allowing him to slightly hover. And the captain introduces Flapjack as the most important person on the Moon Dancer because Flumpf is the spell jammer. He is the person that is controlling the ship and flying the ship through wild space. He is actually the pilot, the navigator, and everything like that. And the captain does talk very positively about Flapjack and says that he has some very acute um, powers of telepathy that have actually saved the Moon Dancer and their lives several times when they have been moving through um, wild space. Apart from those places, there seems to be other doors and cabins, but nothing that she willingly shows you, if that makes sense. Um, you see doors all over the place, but really and truly, she seems to be just saying, that's my captain's chamber, that's the cargo, this is Flapjack, um, and that is it. Um, she then um, says to you that you can either take a tour or she's quite keen for you to be active members of the, the crew and to do what you can. And if anybody sort of like says, oh, well, I don't know, he, she's sort of like sarcastically almost reminds you that she has saved you from a, a planet that appears to be completely overgrown by crystal vines. Um, you do seem to be in an air bubble. You have no issues breathing at all. And there does appear to be gravity. The gravity seems to be going to the central plane of the ship. So if you did climb a mast and jump down, you do jump down in normal, with normal gravity. There's no slow motion fall. There's no um, Superman leaps or, or anything like that. So I think the first time, the first thing to do is to probably let's have um, a short rest um, so we can um, check what is happening with hit points because I know some of you are not, shall I say, on full health. Um, so just to let you know that the, the trip, the captain says to the rock, is going to take roughly about um, three days. Um, but on this, so you might want to say, no, I don't, we won't take a short rest here. we we'll just wait to the evening. Or you can take it and then, you know, when we get to the end of the first day, we can go from there. So, yeah, imagine just to start off with that you are together. You've had your ship's tour. Um, Ty is still looking quite um, queasy. So you're stood over at one of the rails uh, you know, near the edge of the ship, just in case. And Ty, just so you know, when you vomit, it does fall over. Um, it doesn't sort of like come back up at any point that you can see. So yeah, so let's pretend that you're all together. And this would be a, a golden opportunity for you to narrate what your character feels and what's going to be your goals um, etc. From from this point on, well, um, Solvar is way too excited to rest. He's seen some damage, but it's, it's nothing he's not used to. Um, so he will go to the captain and say, uh, uh, "Can I help out? Because it's brilliant. 
Look at the stars. In, you know, did you help out upstairs or put it on the deck? You muted. Uh, and Wills, I think you're muted. Thank you. Um, she says, she turns around to Salva and says, oh, big, a big guy like you, she says, leave, prop that axe up over there. And she looks around and she picks up what appears to be a, a mop. And she says, might be a good idea to start to scrub the decks, get rid of any, well, anything that's been left by people who are not really, you know, used to this sort of thing. Yeah, I can do that. Uh, no, no problem. Thank you. And, I, and I'll scuttle on to the, to, the, to, the, to the to whatever mess is on the floor and start yeah. cleaning it. Nice. And there, there's some of the commoners see you do it and you you, you hear a bit of a um uh, some chatter some chatter roll, roll your insight for me oh why stop rolling roll 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 Ooh. I'm not. See, I'm not seeing anything at oh. the moment. <laughs> oh, hang on. Um, how does that go across that? Oh, I have to do that, don't I? Yeah, there we go. So oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's twenty. Not can hear everything. Uh, you, yeah. Well, you can hear. Hearing wasn't the issue, uh, but uh, understanding, yes. understanding, and you, the, you first of all thought that they might be talking about your fine physique or your prowess in battle. But it does seem like they're talking about, look at the funny big man having to sweep the deck. And you do almost like hear one of them talk about um, women's work. Um, it, Solvar will stand up, turn around to them, walk up really, really close and say, you get mop. You get bucket, help, clean deck. Fantastic. Um, you can. It's like intimidation. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to um, ask for. I'm just popping my own character sheet out because otherwise I'm going to end up asking for a role that doesn't actually exist. Wow, you are on fire today. <laughs> I've got, a new, I've got a new cheat code. I was going to say, I, I, have you got something new it can, that... You can only do 21s, though. Oh, right. Oh. D drat, drat. Um, yeah, so you sort of, like, uh, make your comment and you, you suddenly notice that they're almost, like, very keen to get uh, working and they, they sort of, like, they stop their laughter straight away and almost are like subservient to you and so like sort of like yeah yeah mister yeah yeah yes yeah, sir yes yeah, sir uh, you you hear them as as they go off to find buckets and mops and random cloths to clean bits and uh, you hear them chastising uh, a couple of people we told you not to say that to him he's got a bloody big axe why are you saying that he could chop you up in a matter of minutes and they all sort of like go around. And for the rest of the voyage, um, Sol, you find that these are these people are very subservient to you. Uh, always when, when you walk past, they probably don't know your name because I don't think you've given it. But they, yeah. they sort, of like, sort of like call you Esquire or Lord. And they sort of like say, morning, Lord, like this, you know, or they, they, they doff their caps as you um, walk around, you definitely have made a super duper impression um, of. Very good chief. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, you. They're definitely impressed. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. So you're off doing that. Um, what about everybody else? I um, I, I think. Miss Evan here, uh, Jennifer, would likely try and avoid any of this manual labor on deck, especially seeing how Saul can get so energized about that. Um, 
I think the only place she would feel comfortable outside of a forest would be in the kitchen since uh, right. uh, the way she grew up. So her, her goal is to find the kitchen and see if she can um, loiter there and help out and perhaps start fires. Yeah, right. So I will move you um, to the kitchen. Also, uh, am I supposed to be blind because I'm a human? I, I don't have vision. Oh, oh you... <laughs> <laughs> I, I followed along diligently, but there is never a good point to interrupt you. And I just thought maybe I don't have dark vision because I'm a, I'm a human. Can you uh, see things now? Yes. Yeah. Uh, can I was any... Watching where you're pinging, so I had a, I had a good idea of what was going Does, on. Can anybody else not see at the present moment? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I can see. You can all see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Brilliant. I'm going to move you into the um, galley. Um, so it should hopefully light up for you as you get there. Yes. And okay. A small room. Yeah. Um, it's a rather small galley. It appears to be, there seems to be two people in here. One person who seems to be definitely the... A, a cook of the ship um they seem to be very um well organized and there seems to be um a woman and a girl sorry as well so two grown-ups and a girl and you now and the the burly sort of like guy uh, as you walk in he says oh more 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 cooks i see well, I, I like to think of myself as a... a Stop yattering! And he points over to what appears to be some um, Swedes or turnips. And he says, bowl knife peel. Uh, I can do that. I, yes, sir. I, I'll get to work, um, keeping my head down. Um, and he, he sort of like start to um, peel and chop what appears to be quite old potatoes and swede and you you hear some swearing in the background from the man who seems to be giving everybody a real hard time because he can't seem to light the fire um underneath the stove to actually cook the aforementioned potatoes and swedes and he seems to be muttering. He seems to have a tinderbox there, and he's click, click, clicking um, away, but nothing seems to be happening. And he's sort of like, so, told the captain to give me a new one of these. This is pointless. Apart from there's a lot more flowery language in that. Um, well, I think I might have the tools to help solve this problem here. Um, I want to try and do it with a little bit of flair, though. Um, the, the cantrip I want to cast, of course, is Produce Flame, um, which... Nice. Is, uh, um, no. Okay, actually, I can't do... I was going to say I want to do this in a sneaky way, where, like, I put my hand on his shoulder, and I'm like, you can do it. Have faith, or something. Um, but I... It's and then... In my hand. I would have to throw it in. Like, yeah. <laughs> very awkward. Um, I, I would like to... Uh, with I, I don't make eye contact with him because I was raised not to stare the dwarven brewmasters in the eyes. Um, and so I'll... You could, if you wish, you could, if you wish, if you want to be a little bit stealthy, um, you could try to distract him in some way and you can then roll a sleight of hand skill um, to see whether or not... So you'll roll your spell to make sure it comes off but then you roll your sleight of hand in order to see whether or not you managed to distract him and light it so you can sort of like pretend, if you wish, that it was him. So you do have um, options there if you would like them. I want... Uh, actually, I, I want to show that I have value in this kitchen, so I'm going to do it. I, I'm just going to keep my head down, go over, produce flame. Nice. Uh, make it obvious that I'm doing this I guess uh, I'm going to roll this little cantrip. Yep. Uh, I think it's rolling. Uh, 50. Um, yeah. Um, 13. So that, that uh, um, go off, not, not a problem. And you 
It's not the best flame that you've ever produced, but it's not bad. And you manage to send it to the wood and it, it you suddenly realise that one of the reasons it wasn't catching on fire straight away with the tinderbox was that there was some dampness in the logs and the, the kindling. But your fire, so when it actually hits, there's a bit of spitting and sizzling noises before the flame catches and the bonfire sorry not the bonfire the cook the fire underneath the stove um actually comes to life and the water up above starts to eat up and yeah let let's see whether or not you can impress this guy so I would like you to roll for me um, a persuasion roll. And the DC is just going to be 10 <laughs> on this roll. Uh, well, I reek of campfire smoke, and I'm not the best with, with words, but let's see how this goes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, you saw your, your wonderful flame, your... Almost like that you didn't say to him things like, oh, I can do this. He, he's really impressed with your initiative. And, you know, he sort of like looks at you and he, you almost like get an underhand comment, if that makes sense. And he sort of goes, good job then. You know, a bit, a bit like um, if you've seen Hancock when he's going around saying, good job, good job. <laughs> you know, but he, 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 do, he is seems to be impressed with you at that point so Sol, Sol are you still mopping or are you just walking around looking lordly at the moment i forgot to ask no i'll be mopping mopping okay so what, what, no i was just same as everybody else just that's what my father told me nice so Sol's busy mopping and keeping his keeping the mopping crew in, in check there's a bit over there don't forget that. Um, which Captain um, Elena is well impressed. Um, she she seems to be stood um, as a stern and uh, with her arms folded, look casting casting her eye around and seeing the the wonderfulness of the cleanliness that you are providing. And yeah, the cook is really up on form and sort of like is begrudgingly saying that you're quite good, Jennifer. Uh, he sort of like says, let's see whether or not you can cook potatoes. And he seems to be, this might be somebody that you have to keep impressing. Um, which leaves only um, Ty and um, Perry. Um, Jennifer, are you taking a short rest or not? Sol wasn't. He was just getting on with things. Are you taking a short rest or not? I am not because I figured if I start resting, then Saul's going to make me start sweeping. Uh, mo yeah, <laughs> mo most definitely. <laughs> most definitely. So, yeah, Perry and Ty, what, what are you going? I'm going to move Flapjack back into his um, room, um, just so you know. He's still on board the ship, but not actually there. So, Perry Clear, so though he would really, really like to spend time with Flatjack and ask some questions and find out more about the um more about the workings of the, the vessel. He 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 appreciates that it's it, this isn't the time and probably the place, and you know, we we have to prove our worth on the on the ship. And he, he was very um he was very intrigued about the um the small um catapult. On the uh, mounted on the back of the the, the vessel, which yeah. was in disrepair, and um, even when they were being shown around the ship, he 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 had he had already started to think of ways that it. Could, I mean, it doesn't look a very complicated design, you know, and he thinks he can probably repair it, and 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 maybe even uh, well, almost definitely um, improve it. Um, so he's going to um, he's going to offer his services um, to um, to see whether or not he can get it up and running. Yeah. So I've put you up onto the stern castle. I hope you can see it now. Thank there is indeed. there is, of course, a, a back mast there that is blocking some of your 
um, vision, but you should be able to move uh, around. So do you have a, a skill that you would like to roll to see how much disrepair it's in? I'm presuming you must have, um, do you have like a role to do with being a, a gnome? Um, I have a, uh, I mean, he's a, he's a, he's a tinker basically yeah um but um he was um he was looking at um maybe first of all maybe using his insight so that he could um he could get the general runnings of, yeah. of how how the contraption works and he'll even he'll even start to take he'll take off his backpack and he has um Ill, um, ink and a quill and some parchment in there yeah and he'll start making notes and he'll start um doing um drawings and try, trying to work out you know exactly what would be needed to get it up and running and uh how he could how he could put the 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 Simmersut mark on it to okay. um to make it better than it was previously and and therefore you know proving his worth as a, a value member paying for his passage if if you will so has Perry had any experience no. of none at all so let's make the DC for this then let's make it a fifteen. Uh, because it, it's a basic mechanism. It what, shouldn't be too hard for you to um, figure out. Um, so a hard roll would be a DC of 20. But I think you probably got general knowledge about the basic mechanics. Can I of, use investigation to, or would insight be in, better? Insight will be, um, oh, you, you could use I for one of them. I, I, I'm not. Which would you prefer? Um, well, let's do investigation then. Okay. I don't know whether or not it's my internet or whether or not the dice rolling is this. Uh, the combat will be at quarter to, at half past nine. So can you just roll your initiatives now? And then we, we should be able to get them through. It's, it still doesn't confirm. Oh, there it goes. It has now 26. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, the, the actual mechanism is not at fault um, at all. It seems that the trebuchet, sometime in the past, seems to have been hit. And some of the main beams need to be replaced. So the actual um, cranking um mechanism at the back is absolutely fine it's a bit at the front and a bit near the um the cup of the trebuchet and things like that and you don't well you can try to have um try to fix it um but you probably think that there needs to be wood there's definitely some um, lengths of wood some structure missing yeah. yeah or the structure has been damaged so imagine like a, a main beam um looks like it's been hit by something and it's warped and splintered and it doesn't look it looks like the whole beam needs to be replaced but it doesn't look like anybody else was actively repairing it. no not at all it looks like it's it looks like it's been like that for quite a while. Okay. Quite a while. I mean, Pericles isn't isn't a skilled um, carpenter. Um, he's going to see whether or not he can maybe almost like jury rig something so that it might be good for one or two shots you know so so that it's it's operational if if needed in an emergency until somebody who is better suited for the work at hand can okay so do you may, maybe you know i don't know altering the detention or you know something so that he can it can i i'm, I'm assuming you have some kind of tools he has his tinkering tools yeah. and his and his tools and any other 
and I, I think use any tools that are lying around. I, I think your um, tinkering tools actually gives you a role. Am I right in that? Uh, I'm not sure. Um, I'm sure Medivac uh, might know, or Matt might know. This is BR page 37 as for the tinker. Basic rules, I suppose it is, isn't it? Go to your inventory. Yeah. I'm just going to mine now just to see what I've got here. Um, if you are you on, uh, um, beyond, uh, yeah, it just says tinker tools and then it has a there's no sort of like dice box or anything. No, it just it, says yeah. utility, yeah, mine says utility as well. Uh, this special, but there's, there's nothing, there's nothing to okay. So let's, I can multitask and look at things um, while listening to the next bit. So um, first thing, is Perry taking a short rest? Um, yes, I will take a, a short rest. Okay, then. So if you'd like to decide, we'll do your first um, roll to see how many, the first hit dice roll. Okay. You can probably um, rest up against the the mast here and sort of like take a few moments off you're well out the way of sol who's busy still busy strutting his stuff with his mop uh, around the place so nothing came up when i when i clicked it confirm you have completed all your bids right didn't put any hit points on so i roll um a d8 and add two on it yeah yeah that would be your first roll. D8. Uh, how do you put, how do I add two onto it? Oh, well, I'll just roll it and then add two. So nine, nine points of. Um, yeah, so that would take you, well, that, would that take you up to, no? Uh, no, it will put me up to, um, it will put me up to 34, which I'll, um, which I'll, I'll leave. Okay. Um, thirty-four out of so I'll just just have probably I'll just have an hour. Okay, that that's fine. So what I I think, um, if you have a kit, um, when the kit is there, it says proficiency with this kit lets you add your proficiency bonus to any of the ability checks made for doing something. Um, so do you have a a proficiency in your tinker tools? Um. Yes, as a gnome, I think I. Brilliant. You should have a little dot next to the item. Or... No, there's no dot Is next it... to it. So tools, like I've got cook utensils. On the, the end of beyond on the bottom left, there's uh, proficiencies and languages. Oh, yes. Yeah, tinker tools. Yeah. Thieves tools and tinker tools. Yeah. yeah. Okay, then. So you can actually, um, you will roll. Uh, a d20 and then add on your um, proficiency okay i'll check it at a later date whether or not we're on track with it the tension of the dice rolling today is this. so that'll be a 10 brilliant um so yeah so you tinker away and you seem to be happy with what you've done. That role, just to let you know, has still not come up on my screen <laughs> at all. Yeah, same here. I, I still not got it uh, at all, but that's not a problem. Yeah, so you busy yourself um, away. Um, did you want to do another uh, hit dice um, or no, not? No, no. I'm, I'm quite happy. Brilliant. With, with okay. That, just that one hour. So I've he made... Would have, he would just probably just familiarized himself with the, the general layout of yeah the, sat down yeah took a rest pretend to be observant and yeah and then tinker with the trebuchet um act, excellent ty what are you up to um ty is currently having the worst time of his life yes because, he's <laughs> um, yeah he has spent his entire life adapting to sort of the world around him adapting to the nature around him and now he's completely disconnected from all of that. 
On yeah. top of that, he's he's feeling awful in his stomach. It's a feeling he's never felt before. He has no idea what's going on. And uh, as he's looking over the edge of the boat, he just he sees the planet that he grew up on, that all his friends are on, that his whole community that he used to live in in the woods is on, slowly being taken over by these crystalline vines. And Very much so. He just he starts to panic. He'll he'll start to breathe faster and faster and faster. He'll have a full blown panic attack, and then he'll fall back and fall over and pass out. Excellent. And that'll be his uh, his his version of a short rest. Yeah. Um, so roll your um, hit dice that you want to. So you can roll a hit dice, add on your constitution bonus, and then after that you can choose to roll. Uh, more hit dice if you wish um so oh I've, I, now that's interesting ties has just come straight up six yeah you know uh, so do you have a constitution bonus constitution bonus <laughs> for your hit points uh i'm not sure what's what's your well, const- constitution I, is there'll be a box underneath it and it'll have either a plus or minus or a zero in it oh it has plus one okay. yeah so that's seven so you're i, I think it'll it though because it, it's a 1d8 plus one so i think the plus one is the constitution yep you're right it's five plus one yeah yeah, yeah. brilliant oh that's automatically added that's cool then yeah. so that's six points that you've got um, back would you like to be passed out for another hour? <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll take two hours of being yeah. passed out. That's fine. Oh, boy, what a great roll. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, two hours is fine, but I'm I'm feeling awful, so it's it's not yeah. recovering too much. Yeah. Okay, and when you, um, when you actually come round um, after, you know, what seems to be quite a long time you sort of like wake up and you're somewhat <laughs> perry's no. roll does come through yeah well no the other role which i it's thought was a seven beyond, was hadn't hadn't come hadn't come that was for my hit points so the other role the d20 that i rolled hadn't come through at all all oh, right so that that's fine that's not a problem at all are you rolling from beyond yeah yeah, um, try once you're clicking beyond. Sometimes it wants you to swipe on the um, roll screen to you just drag your mouse with the mouse button push down. Right. Okay. And it like rolls it kind of. Yeah. Okay. So Ty, when you wake up, um, you find yourself in quite a, a different place to where you were before, you seem to be lying down on what appears to be a bed. It's quite a comfortable bed as well. It seems to be very soft, not like the the hard trees or, you know, branches that you're used to reclining it to sleep. It's soft and you're not too sure, but there seems to be a a sweet, honey-like smell. The smell of flowers. A pleasant scent. And you open your eyes and you seem to be on a bed. There seems to be some kind of cloth covering you up. And also, um, down by the side of your the bed appears to be a iron type of bucket it's something that you saw them using to mop have water in to mop the floor of the deck and you look round and you seem to be in a rather pleasant cabin you can also see that in this cabin there is what appears to be a desk a chair and what seems to be a trunk and the reason i say it's a trunk is because it's open and there seems to be a range of clothing and trinkets in there bracelets etc and then the other thing that's in a in the room 
is a chest. And this is definitely a chest. And this is definitely closed. And yeah, shut tight. Yeah. What would you like to do? Um, uh, well, I mean, at this point, Ty is still not feeling too good. So he'll sort of stand up and try to walk around. But it's it's more like, you know, a baby taking his first steps. Yeah. So like stumbling, trying to kind of hold on to the wall, trying to keep himself straight. Okay. So what, then... so what I would like you to roll for me. Can you roll for me an athletics check, but at disadvantage, please? So um, you'll be rolling it twice, and we'll take the lowest, the lowest roll that you do. Okay. Oh boy, my my rolls are on fire today. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um. So you sort of like stagger up, and you you start to move around. And you, you're not very steady on your feet still. There still seems to be some movement where you are. And although you stagger for a while, you suddenly lurch to one side and hit the table and then try to rebalance yourself and take stuff off the table um, as you try to recover and take a step back uh on that um natural one i do believe and yep. you promptly put your foot in the bucket oh. uh, and as things clash to the floor all of a sudden the door opens and you see that the captain um, has come into um, what appears to be her her quarters, and she sort of like she comes in and she she sort of like withering seaweed. What? And then she sort of like sees you there with your foot in a bucket that seems to be rather wet. Just so you know, Ty, it definitely had something in it. And she looks at the stuff on the um, floor from her her desk. And there, there's a pause for a while. Um, roll your um, insight for me. Yeah, and you, you suddenly get the feeling that she's going to almost like shout at you or almost like tell you off. But at the last moment, she throws her head back and lets out um, a huge laugh. And she says, you weren't trying to steal from me, were you? No, no, I'm so sorry. I, I, I don't know what's going on. I promise I'll, I'll fix all of this. I'll, I'll clean it up. I'll, I'll put everything back. I, I just, where are we? What's going on? She, she sort of like says, hey, she says, well, she says, you best want to get your foot cleaned first. Otherwise, you know, you might be smelling for the rest of the journey. And then she says, wait, she says, I have something for you. And she, sorry, my pirate voice went into Somerset Farmer voice there. There was just a, a, a quick um, change. And she goes over to the trunk that is already open. And you can see various lady attire draped um, over it and she sort of like rummages through and she picks something up and it, it seems to be a, almost like a potion bottle and she says she says i kept this for when i was a a wee one on the ships she says, and she sort of like gets down close to you and says i was the sh same she says she says there's one draft left she says you you can have it young lad at this point, you tell her how how old is Ty, because everybody probably sees him as a. He he appears to be in his early twenties, uh, but in actuality, he is 
540. Uh, he's actually 125 years old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Medivac is eating nuts again. I've just seen him. Are you, <laughs> are you eating nuts? <laughs> Every time he, when he plays Dungeons and Dragons, he, he eats nuts. <laughs> um, she's sort of like, <laughs> she's sort of like, uh, sort of like hands over this um, small vial. It seems to be a potion bottle and it seems to have some kind of green liquid in it. It looks like there's about one third of it left. She says, down the hatch. Uh, all right, he'll he'll uh, comply. Yeah, and you you it, it's one of those moments that you suddenly thought I shouldn't really have put anything on my stomach. How it is at the moment, you know that moment when you're so feeling so sick that even if you think of food, then you you get nauseous and probably vomit all over the place, and you suddenly feel that you're going to puke again. You're going to vomit uh, again. And you sort of like quickly take your foot out of the um, bucket and turn around. And, but instead of um, being sick, um, you let out this enormous belch, this huge burp that goes on for a good 10 seconds um, before uh, it stops. And after that, you feel somewhat um, easier stomach-wise, but not so much steady-wise, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. She sort of like says, you might want to go and clean your foot up. Your, the, the big guy's got a mop if you want to use one. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, uh, thank you so much. That, that's uh, I'm already feeling much better. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'll go. I'll go join Solvar, and then uh, maybe I can I can join him in the mopping. Um, yeah, um, you can re um, report to Solvar. Solvar. Yeah, because right before I passed out, I heard it was a woman's work, and in the Thai's <laughs> community. It's, it's very much like, you know, mother nature. Women are really revered. They are creators of life. So like a woman's work is, is a very high honor. Excellent. So he, he would love to be a part of that. So, um, yes, Saul, um, Ty approaches you. Hello, Ty. How are you <laughs> feeling, mate? I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest, Saul. I've, I've, I've been better. But... Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting used to it. They just gave me some, a little something, and I'm not sure what it did, but my stomach is feeling much better. So, um, it, <laughs> it does, I'm, I'm assuming he still has the bucket on his foot. Or? Well, it's up to you. You could have brought it yeah. out. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> he'll, he'll say like, uh, can, can you help me get this off? Well, uh, I, I, no, do you, you want to help us? Because I see you brought your own bucket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'd love to help, but I, I don't think my my foot will be a good mop. So maybe if I I'm if gonna, I could get a mop from you, yeah, I, I, I'll I'll lean down, lift up his leg a little bit, and then pull the bucket off. Yeah, it definitely seems to be full of vomit rather than water. And yeah, then, Ty will definitely fall down because him being on one leg is just yeah yeah like, good idea yeah you yeah. could just keel over. I'm, I'm gonna gonna take this bucket of. Um, up chuck and chuck it down, <laughs> out, uh, out of the um, down, down the side of the ship. Well, wasn't that a, a name out of a Mithras adventure? Up, up chuck, was it? Wasn't that the big beast? Uh, you're thinking of up duck. Uh, no, up duck. <laughs> up Quack. Duck. <laughs> <laughs> <What's> up duck? <laughs> I thought there was the big. There was a big, big monster that I'm sure you attacked. Yeah, that was the... Oh, Maybe oh, he's uh, thinking of Zugtuck. Zugtuck, that's it. It was what? Sorry, Mr. Pickles. The, the Zugtuck. The Zugtuck. I knew, well, basically. Yeah, so you can cascade this overboard if you wish. And I'm going to resist, resist the urge to pick out the carrots. <laughs> no matter what you've no been eating. Yes. No, well, always carrots. Yes. Uh, yeah, give me a quick swallow of water. Fill it full of water. 
that guy is going to get a, back a, up and yeah, try to brush. help out where he can. And, yeah, there you go. There's a brush and a bucket of water. Uh, Todd, you. If, if you, you start over there, these two have been doing over there. They're, they're, they're doing the best, but you know. <laughs> two of the commoners says, sorry, my lord. Sorry, my lord. We will mop harder. Are you a lord? You never told me. <laughs> Bro, you know, I, I'm the chieftain's son, so I don't think oh, I, I guess so. Well, uh, thank you, Lord Salford. <laughs> I will. I will be on my way. I'm, I'm looking forward to whatever this adventure leads, but I can't wait to get back to my family in our mountain. As I look behind and see this globe covered with vines, do you think they'll be okay? fine? Yeah, they'll be fine. <laughs> We're made of strong stuff up in the mountains. Um, uh, Perry, can you make for me, please, a perception roll? Uh, yeah. Uh, perception. Just normal, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, um, while you fixing the trebuchet or doing your best, you suddenly catch coming astern and what appears to be in the far distance another ship what would you like to do um you look around to see whether or not anybody else has noticed it it doesn't look like it maybe your gnomish sight or something to do perhaps with your dark vision has made it easily detectable before now He's going to, um, his initial thing is maybe it's another ship that's come off Bayron, you know, uh, like on yeah. the attack of the, um, so he's going to, um, he's going to look around for people to, to tell and he's, he's going to shout at the top of his voice, look, another ship. And once you mentioned that um, the captain um, immediately seems to be next to you um, on the deck and she looks um, astern her vessel out past the trebuchet and what appears to be there's a ship, a vessel coming into view approaching the moon dancer from a stern from the back and the pursuing vessel looks like a giant moth with wings made of iridescent crystal similar in color and luster as the crystalline vines that ravaged your world you can just make out figures on the other vessel's de deck scrambling to arm the ship's trebuchet and the captain shouts to the rest of the ship so everybody hears astral elves she says rather cursing with a more flowering language that i could not dare to utter and they look like then they don't look friendly Battle stations, people, prepare yourself for a fight. And at that point, we will leave the adventure and go for our break. Um, so we will be back at quarter to the hour. Um, so we'll have a 15 minute break. And when we come back, we'll be able to see what happens on the first battle on in wild space okay so make sure you go grab a drink grab something to eat stretch your legs and we will see you quarter to the hour see you soon and come back welcome back everyone so i'm eating toast and um hazel chocolate hazelnut spread mm. so we left the party um being approached from a stern 
by what appears to be a giant moth that also has pe people on board. I just spat a bit of toast somewhere there. I do apologize. <laughs> Did anybody catch it? There's a <laughs> fire um, and yeah, coming astern with what appears to be people on the deck. And they seem to be readying their trebuchet to fire at the um, space galleon, at the moon dancer. So, yeah, so the orders have been given by the captain. Um, what's going to be your general plan? I'm going to move you back to the moon dancer. Um, so you should see yourselves on there again um yeah what what would you like to um do the captain's up on the um stern castle with you perry that's where um she is um jennifer can you roll for me a a perception um check we're going to have the um dc um to be let me just open my oh, dc 26 uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well no it would have been hard which would have been 20 so yeah you actually over the the bashes of pans you actually hear um the cry uh, as well and the the cook the seasoned cook looks um quite concerned and he turns to the the woman and the young child and and you as well and and says either take cover underneath something or get below deck this is no place for people like you people like me uh, he sort of like looks up and down and he says you don't really look like you've had much combat experience. Believe me, your little flame won't do much out there. Well, you never know what a little bit of fire can do. <laughs> I've burned through many, many foes. Uh, and I'm just going to uh, leave the room, go out on deck to uh, join my allies, who I assume are being heroic without And me. And as you, uh, you know, march out, you hear him saying, just don't burn down the whole flipping ship. As, as you uh, <laughs> no promises i whisper only to myself <laughs> yeah. i'll move you out onto the deck so you should be able to move yourself around um yeah so um lord sol and ty what's going to be your plans i'm going to grab my axe <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm not going to just drop the mop because i don't want somebody to fall over it so I'll move it to where the side where my axe is and I'll put it down and grab my axe and I'll I'll be looking around furtively with a smile on my face. There's combat incoming. <laughs> and Ty, what are you going to be doing? Um well I'm not I'm not sure if I heard what the captain's orders were. So I'm not sure what I'm doing. Well, roll your um perception it'd be quite easy to hear it so it'd be a, a dc of 10 so yeah you you hear the command you're not too sure what it means but you hear the command well i, I mean like me matt isn't doesn't know what the command is or Oh, well, am I not supposed to know or i'm not i feel like i missed something no just when she said um that she's shouted out for people to get ready. Um, they don't look friendly. Best ready yourselves for a fight. Oh, okay. I thought that there was, was something the... specific that we. No, no. Just ready okay. yourself. Sorry, yeah. Just ready yeah. yourself for. Us. Uh, um, uh, yeah, that that explains. Well, your intelligence. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I understand now why there was a pause when I said roll your perception. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, what would Ty like to do? Um, yeah, Ty will ready himself for whatever combat feels like now that he's, you know, barely stable on his feet. So, hmm. you, Sol and Ty, you see Jennifer 
storm out of the door, flinging it wide as she comes in, red hair flailing behind her. Um, yeah, and um, Perry, what would you like to do? Perry is looking at the captain, stood next to the little catapult, and he's going to he's going to tap it on the side, and he's going to say. She's good to go, Captain. And then he's going to go and stand next to the side of her because he has no idea the operation of actually mm. firing it. And um, he's going to unsling his um, his crossbow and load that, and he's going to await the praise um, that the captain gives him um, when she finds the improvements that he's he's made to... Brilliant, yeah. Um, so just to let you know, um, starships in Spelljammer have hit points, they have armor classes, but obviously their armor classes is not relevant, not the same as yours. So arm class 15 of for ship is for ship to ship, if that makes sense. It's not for you trying to hit the ship. So you can't sort of like throw an axe and arm class 15 will hit and do damage to it. Um, but they do have damage. And as, um, as was mentioned beforehand, they are loading up and preparing to fire their um, trebuchet at you, at the ship. So just so you know, your ship... Had, just so you can gain an indication of the two ships, your ship has an arm class of 15 and it has 100 hit points. Okay. The, um, sorry, wrong. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I wonder, would, would a trebuchet uh, count as a missile? <laughs> Uh, yeah, why do you want to deflect it and go, whoa, <laughs> that would be a, <laughs> that would be a, a superb feat if that happened. Um, so your, your galleon has an arm class of 15 and it has, sorry, it's the trebuchet that has 100 hit points. It has 400 hit points. So your space galleon is made out of wood and it has an arm class of 15. Um, the armor class of the um, star moth coming towards you um, has an arm class of 13 because it's made out of some kind of um, ceramic material, hence why it looks so crystalline. However, just to give you an idea, it has 400 hit points um, on it, rather compared to your 100, um, sorry, your... Uh, 400. 400, yeah. So you're equally matched, um, but their um, trebuchet um, fires. Okay, and let's just see. This is coming in as a normal roll. So their trebuchet fires, and what hurls through the uh, space, the wild space between you both, um, appears to be a huge boulder and it seems to be um, aimed at the stern of the ship and you quickly understand that they're trying to take out your trebuchet um, as it comes in um, so the 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 missile weapon comes in it's uh, hitting the stern um, castle and it suddenly does 35 um, points of damage to the actual um, trebuchet on the back of your boat. That um, splinters it quite nicely, and it sort of like um, goes off in various directions as the um, huge rock slams um, into it. Um, Elena and... Perry, we need to make some um, dexterity um, checks, please. Dexterity saving throws, yeah. Ooh, 
I've got a 19. Um, yeah, that is... So you're going to take not half damage, you're going to take half of half, if that makes sense. So 35, 17, um, you will take um, eight eight points of damage um, as it um, clicks into you. And could you also, for me, play, um, do uh, an athletics check? Athletics, yeah? Yeah. Or, yeah, athletics. Unless you have acrobatics. I've got acrobatics as well. Okay, so you um, it comes in, it splinters your um, trebuchet. It's not completely destroyed. And you manage to avoid the splintering, some of the splintering trebuchet, and, but you are now prone um, on the floor. The, the captain also um, dies to one side as well and takes cover from the mast. You probably were near the mast that it actually protected um, you. And um, Elena turns to you, Perry, and says, Is it ready to go? It was. And yes. she, she... Fire! She says, she, when you say it was, she says, well, fix it. And she turns round and shouts to over onto the cargo deck. Um, sorry, onto the um, deck of the ship. She shouts, she says, trebuchet, crew, to the trebuchet now. And Sol and um, Ty and Jennifer, you notice that. Um, three or four um, sailors that seem to be part of the original crew rather than commoners sort of like drop whatever they were um, getting or using and they quickly run um, up to the trebuchet at the back. Um, at that point, um, the captain shouts out um, quite... abruptly and and to the the point she says um she says ship coming about and she seems to grab the wheel or um communicates to flapjack in some description that you suddenly notice that the ship abruptly um starts to turn um to turn round to be facing the um, star moth as it comes. So rather than fleeing, it seems that she is trying to turn the ship to go towards the star moth. Um, Jenny, um, Jennifer, Sol, and Ty, you just need to make um, dexterity, uh, athletics check, please, DC 10. Oh, yeah, so, <laughs> Ty, yeah, what happens to you? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm useless. I, I'm still <laughs> very much not a, I haven't found my footing yet, and I'll just, I'll, I'll, I'll fall to wherever the boat takes me. Yeah, okay, so, so it's turning to the left to the port, so you saw, like, maybe fall down and slide, um, across next to the railing. Um, Solvar, what what do you do? You've made the check. What do, what do we see with you? Um, you you'll just see me stand there. I'll, I'll, I'll sway slightly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I'll look with a, with a puzzled look on my face. Yeah, as Ty uh, suddenly flies <laughs> by the past you. <laughs> Sorry, the, the, the floor is... Oh, God, I've got all the hazra. <laughs> Boy, sorry, the the the, the, fl the floor's all wet, mate. Yeah, as Ty goes sliding to uh, back, yeah, and you, yeah, as Solval just sort of like tenses his thighs a bit, so as the boat tips, your legs are sort of like take the the oh, difference, the tilt, and yeah, Jennifer, you make yours just. Yeah, and that's because Jennifer is very enthralled with the, the chaos of combat and things breaking and potentially catching fire. So she has sort of a wobbly, almost like entranced uh, gait as she narrowly stays standing many times. 
Yeah, and uh, the the ship turns around and the captain turns to you, um, Perry, and and says to you, um, "We can't outrun her. We're going to have to get closer so we c- she can't use it use a trebuchet against us." And she turns around and she shouts um, orders, "Man the blisters!" And more crew members come out to man the forward ballistas, uh, if you remember, are on the front of the deck. And the whole moon dancer turns round and it looks like everything's going to be coming head to head for um, some kind of a possibly a ramming situation. Um, yeah, what would anybody like to do? Um, it's completely up to you. You've got um, one action of whatever. Um, Pericles wants to um, wants to write himself on the off because he he got thrown to the the floor yeah. by this um, by the impact of this boulder. Um, so he wants to um, write himself, and he he wants to go over to the. Um, over to the the little catapult. Um, he, he basically wants to look at the damage that's been done and see whether or not it, any anything can be done from it. Okay, cool. About it. Um, I'm just going just to... in case you know we have to run or anything and yeah, get a quick getaway. I've put the um, picture of the. Um, the star, the star moth ship, which is actually called the Dark Star, um, that should now be in your journal, so you should be able to see it. Mm. That does look like a moth. Yeah, and yeah, you um, you get over to the um, um, trebuchet. Just roll um, an investigation check. I think that's what you used before. My first thoughts, it looked like a sort of like a weapon that um, a Klingon would use. Klingon bird of prey. Um, what am I doing? Investigation? Yeah, yeah please. I can see you, Kirk. <laughs> yeah, that, what's that one from? Is, is that the... Undisco- undiscovered country. Undiscovered country, that's it, yeah. Um, yeah, you quickly um, have a, a look over this and you, you suddenly realise that this trebuchet is not going to work. Um, it looks like the back crankshaft has been snapped and even the um, rope that pulls down the catapult arm, that's been um, completely torn and and split. It doesn't look like it's going to be working um, anytime soon, um, despite your um, actions earlier on. Um, Jennifer's soul or tie, is there anything you would like to do? You have one, one sort of like round of action. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm going to shout out, do we have any archers? Archers to the deck. Um, uh, yeah. uh, get, get, try and shoot the ones that are firing those weapons at Yeah, so do you want to persuade or intimidate? I think they're oh, both intimidate. on the... Oh, yeah. hang on, let's have a look, sorry. <laughs> yeah. no, no, he wouldn't. He'd, he'd intimidate. He'd use that growly, growly. Uh, yeah. Here we go. Uh, Ty will for a. Uh, or wait, are we still going? Yeah, you still go. Ty will uh, for a second just consider staying down because he's he's just having an awful time. But then he'll he'll remind himself of when he was back down on the surface when they were all shouting. Little elf, it wasn't his name, but it's it's much. Oh yeah! So he will he will use he will cling on to that memory and he will push himself back up and yeah. Nice. Um, see where he's going next. So hang on. So because I think this game has um, a willpower check in it. Am I right? I'm not sure. Would that be like a wisdom save? Um. Yeah. Um. Let me. Just yeah, so let's do um a, a wisdom save. Good good call, Pickles. Come on, Ty. 
that's good. Yeah, and you you also um, notice that there's some some of the young children as they get ushered below deck. They're sort of like looking at you, and you sort of like see their um, admiration in their eyes as as they um, see you, and you. Um, get to your feet and take up what will, could probably be seen as a combat stance. And yeah, um, one of the um, young girls, as she gets herded below deck, so sort of like shouts out, go tie like that. And she sort of like gets um, ushered um, away. And, at- and here's the name Ty. I'll see a single tear will. <laughs> <laughs> that was the last time you heard your name, Jennifer. Uh, yeah, it, I want to check my allies since I don't have anything to throw and I don't. <laughs> you could throw Ty. You could throw Ty. <laughs> well, he looks like he could use some encouragement, but I'm looking at like Ty and Saul. Are either of them visibly injured to, to me? Um, roll your medicine skill. And Absolutely. I'm going to give this a... Oh. Oh, well, it doesn't really what I give it. <laughs> I was going to give it a hard roll, but that's absolutely fine because hard is 20. Um, you see that they are um, damaged to some extent, but both combat worthy. I think that would be fair, Sol and Ty. Yeah. 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 It doesn't look like, I mean, neither of them look like they're favoring a left leg or if anything, they both look true combat specialists that are preparing for some kind of melee weapon uh, exchange okay that makes sense i well i've i've adventured with these fellows for a while and sometimes i know that people need encouragement so i'm going to cast a first level spell on on ty to give him some encouragement let him know you got this uh it's healing word that i'm giving him oh nice and i'm giving you four Nice. That's very nice. That's very nice. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, so at that point, um, you notice, um, Solvar, that so some of the um, sailors are sort of like were brandishing what appear to be um, swords or scimitars, and you bring out this cry for bows, and they sort of like look quite confused for a while and they look at the ballistas um as if that might be the answer and one of them sort of like um brings out what appears to be some kind of sling shot and frantically starts to look around they seem to be really scared of you and uh, you know your commanding presence but at the same time they're confused. Yeah, they're, they're they're sort of like thinking what bows who, who has a bow here you know and and at that, <laughs> and at that point, um, Elena um, shouts that um, they mean to board us. And as the ships come head to head, um, the the dark star um, comes up alongside, and you suddenly realize how big this moth is. And from it jumps down or jumps across onto your ship um, some people. It's Godzilla. It's Mom Mothra carrying Godzilla. Yeah. <laughs> um, so they're actually coming um, to the south of your position. Um because remember the the ship is turning around does that make sense so they actually i'll i'll put them on and you'll be able um to see what they look like let me just grab them and put them to your layer can you see that one yep and that one. Yeah. And mm-hmm. uh, there's one more coming on. He just refused to move at the moment. 
He's refusing to move full stop. Let me just change my... Um, I think Vol 20 is probably dying on me. Let me do it. Um, they seem to be clad out in armor. Um, their visors are down. And you do remember that um, Captain um, Ilana said um, something about um, astral elves or something. And yeah, they're, they're coming down to attack. Right, let's see if I can get this last captain down onto your ship. And then, just to let you know... Um, the following thing um, happens as they um, come onto deck. They um, state, they say, you are now, we are now in charge of your vessel. We have taken it over and we will be boarding and taking everyone prisoners and impounding your goods as well. And at that point, Captain um, Elena Sarfell says, Blight and fungus, you cannot mean that. And she billows at the top of her voice. Bellows, sorry, not billows. Bellows at the top of her voice. Attack! Like that. And the, um, the elves, the astral elves, draw their weapons. So we are going to go into initiative. So please remember to click your token um, before you roll initiative. Oh, hang on. Did I have the old ones up? Don't worry. I can deal with that. Yeah. It came up blank and then I think everything um, came onto it. So, um, Ty, you've got a 24. Oh, it's actually put everybody's um on which is nice um uh, uh, it hasn't changed um perry's yours is a 20 yeah yeah um Milena's is a 21 jennifer's what we had this problem last time and i'm pretty sure we were like oh well whose dexterity is higher and then we realized it's basically the same so we said whose intelligence is higher and then i just said no 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 He's more battle ready. I'm more aloof. Yeah. I was as surprised that you were getting a, <laughs> a, a seven. Yeah. Um, I'm a little bit aloof. I'm, I'm going to see how things play out before I move. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're just checking the lay of, of the land. Um, so Ty goes um, first, then Elena, then Perry. And uh, let me get rid of the second tie and the second soul and the second um, Jennifer, but it doesn't matter. Uh, okay, um, so that's all done and dusted. So the only thing I need to do now is roll for my elves. Um, here we go. Do you know, I was so um, impressed that it's rolling all to me, but it should be going on to the, um, onto the actual turn order. Can you see them on the turn order? Yeah, Hollow disappeared for me. But I've gone yeah. um, and um, Jenny's gone. Ties on, and then yeah, you might have to, you might have to close it and start it um, up again. But I I know that uh, I know the order, so I'll just um, shout it out. So you've got um, the captains on twenty two, okay, and then the um, two lieutenants. One's on seventeen, and the other one is on seven. Okay. So let's start off. Um, Ty, you're up. Yeah, so I think we said because of my motion sickness that I was going to roll something to see if I got um, disadvantage when I attacked. Yes, we did. Uh, was it 
Was it? What was it? Do you remember? I don't remember. Okay, so let's do a wisdom saving throw then. Let's right. think about it as in um, a willpower. So the, the DC will be 10 on it at the moment because you've had a draft of um, that potion that um, Captain gave you, but that will only last um, a day, so to speak. Okay, then, so you're fine. So, yeah, so you don't need to use right. a, an action up for that or anything like that. So, yeah, all my all my confusion and frustration with everything that's just happened and with, with the world that I got so attached to, seeing it be destroyed before my eyes, I will... Almost like, all, yeah. It's, towards <laughs> these people, like, it's 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 their fault, and I'm I'm going to attack them, and I'll, I'll run up to them as, as fast as I can, and I will use all the force I have to um, do my, you know, I'll, I'll put my hands on their shoulders as hard as I can. Yeah. Even inflicting damage by doing that. Nice. So uh, hang on. Cause I'm... So, I, well, does 19 hit? Um, yeah. So which one are you um, going? Uh, the bottom one. Um, this, this one here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, then. Um, so da, 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 let me see. Um, yeah, so armor classes are a 16. Um, so, okay. yeah. So I'll roll both of those. Yep. Then I'll use one of my key points to do make that a uh, flurry of blows. Nice. Uh, nice. Okay, so I'll do... <laughs> and like, as, wow okay so as i have my palms on him i will also use my um oh what's it called my you're not back hands yeah to try to push him back and push him off the edge of the ship excellent is that a, uh, a strength save that's a dc 14 strength saving throw yeah okay then. here it comes um, he gets a six, um, which means he doesn't um, make that, so he'll be pushed um, back onto his ship. But can you tell me your damage first? Uh, is his ship still there then? Yeah. <laughs> I was hoping he would just fly off. And <laughs> no, the, the ship is right next to you. So, But right. it does knock him off. He is going to also have to make a, um athletics check because he's going over the rail. Um, so the rail's behind him. But can you... Tell me how much damage you've done because it's sort of like gone off my. Uh, um, I think I did so seven and eleven, which is eighteen with the first two hits. Yeah. So let yeah, um, let's do it like that. So if I do minus eighteen first, yeah. I did six and fourteen with the second two, so that's another twenty. Twenty, yeah. Um, yeah, um, so he's he's still um, up. Um, he does look a bit battered. Um, he is below halfway now, um, but he's going to um, have to make a an athletics roll. Otherwise, he's going to go um, on the floor. Well, he's going to make a, a dex um, a dex roll. That's what he's going to. Uh, make and he doesn't make the um the 15 so he is actually prone on the other ship okay so i'm just going to add to him um two things he's going to have a purple um dot to say that he's on the other ship and he's going to be bent over like that to show that he is prone okay yeah um you take an action, bonus action, move action, anything else. You can't have anything else to do at the moment, sure. Nope. <laughs> I'll just shout like, get off this ship. Uh, yeah, then, uh, yeah, nice. I'm, I'm just um, putting a picture of what these guys look like in the um, chat so you can see them. I'm, I'm guessing I, I noticed that they're kind of elf-like. Uh, yeah, so they, they... Maybe that's what gives me like sort of you know, the, the knowledge to know how to push. Yeah. Ve ve push is yeah. so effective. They, they definitely look slight as an elf, but really powerful still. The, the weird thing that you see is that they seem to have their visors down 
that um, is a, is really Sneaky. unusual. You can't see their face at all. Are they uh, taller or? Um, they're taller than you. Okay. They're, but not as tall as um, um, Silva. Okay. Um, so the, the captain, okay, he's going to move first. Now he's going to move away from you, Ty, and head to Sol, which I think that means that you are allowed a tack of opportunity. I'm just looking across to Medivac to see whether or not he nods. Yeah, um, because he's moving more than um, five foot um, away from you. Um, so, yeah, that will hit. Yeah, I will, I will try to, like, kick him in the back of the knee. <laughs> yeah, and as he um, goes um, away... He does that, and then he moves up to you, um, Sol, and he, they're actually fighting, just so you know. Um, they have um, long swords um, out. They don't have their bows out, as in a picture. Um, but they do have, they do have um, two, um, they're multi-attacks, um, so they will be uh, attacking um twice so this is coming to so that's the movement here's his um action uh just normal world please um 21 probably hits you that is a hit most palpable hit and his second one comes in as a nine no sadly oh um so the first um his um hit will be three slashing damage Okay, and that's him. He's um, out of the, uh, that's his actions done. So up at the top, um, Elena seems to be coming down. She's moving um, down to the lower deck, um, but she also is shouting um, warnings um, left, right. Uh, sorry, there's going to be an initiative pop up. Just ignore it. Um, she's also shouting um, orders, um, etc. And she's coming down the stairs to the south of you, um, Jennifer. Um, so she's coming down here and she seems to have her, her usual sword and um, dagger combination out. Um, and Perry, we're up to you. Um, Perry's clearly disappointed that the hard work that he's putting onto this catapult has been done because I mean, by his estimates, range would have been increased by minimum of 8%. Um, but he's going to, which which side did the captain go down? Which uh, stairs? Um, he's here. Okay, so he's, um, he's going to follow there so that he can get to the top and see what's happening. Uh, but he's going to stop at the top with his, with his hand crossbow yeah, out and see whether or not he can see a target. Uh, yeah, he can. Can you see the deck below you? I can see. I can't see anything on it. Uh, right. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to move you to the deck plan. Yeah. Um. So now you should be able to see it. Uh. And on. It's really up. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So you can see that. Um. This guy here hasn't moved into combat yet. The one in front of Ty is over on the opposite um, ship. You see Ty um, knock him, do a flurry of blows onto him, and, and his his final one was almost like a dragon ball punch. Uh, he like go tang like that and pushed him, and he's um, prone on the ship. And it looks like Sol is engaging um, with the of one to the north. Okay, so Pericles is going to take aim at this one yep. with his hand crossbow, which is within 30 feet. Yep, so it does be... For his crossbow. Is the person aware that he's there? Would he get advantage? Um, you can have advantage on this. He probably is aware of Elena, but you'll probably come back down slightly afterwards. Okay. Uh, so you can have um... Um, arm class 16. They all have 16 people, so just keep that in your head. You'll okay, know. so um, advantage roll. 
16 yet. Yeah. So it should roll it twice and we take the highest roll. Okay, so it was a um it was a <laughs> um so yeah, so the twenty six um is was the a critical. Yeah, and so you did um because you have you got it that it rolls the damage all um straight yes, away. Sorry, yeah, is that all right? Yeah, that's it. So that's um sixteen points of damage, yeah. No, no, sixteen normal and then seventeen critical. Oh, seventeen. Because well, it's a sneak attack. Because I I get a sneak attack because I got uh, so minus advantage. minus seventeen rather than um sixteen. Yeah, cool. Um, um, um bonus action. Um, so so the total damage is thirty something or other. All oh, right. What's the total? So you do the seventeen and the sixteen. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll just take another. I took the 17. Yeah, because you roll it off. twice. So it's 9 and 7 and then 2 and 15. Yeah, so I've taken them both off now. He's still up. Was that just like one crossbow bolt? Yeah, but as a with a with a sneak um with a sneak attack because I was at cool. advantage and it, and a critical. So that's sort of like the maximum that I can ever do. Yeah. I'm going to use my um, my bonus action is going to be a cunning action, and I'm going to use hide to um, quickly nip back around the corner. Okay, then. and so we now come to um, the the lieutenant here, who is um, injured, sort of like comes up to um the captain elena and swings with his um double um sword she has an armor class of 15. Ta-da! oh ouch that hits her it's cool. and that that misses her um, um so, um, I never understand these roles. Um, so what's that going to be? Six, seven, eight. What are the elevens? One D ten plus one. Oh no! So that—that's the wrong roll. It, ignore that because it's using it as if it was two-handed, and it's not. Um, so um, that's the first one. Um, critical, I roll twice, don't I? Yeah. Um, so, oh, six and two. That's eight. Okay then. Um, minus eight um, on her. Oh, I bet you've been waiting for this, Saul, haven't you? <laughs> Are you muted? I was muted. <laughs> <laughs> Get those nuts out your mouth and let's go for it. Right. Um, Saul's not happy. He's not. <laughs> he's got a little scratch on his shoulder. <laughs> um, so with that, he's going to go. Oh, way too yep. much. Um, raging. Yeah. You're, you're raging. Yeah. Um. That's your bonus action, damage. isn't it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And you've got two hits coming in, hopefully. Waiting with baiting. Yeah, breath. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hopefully this adds the um, rage damage. Um, 23 hits. Right. And I'll do the other one as well. I've got the damage now. Uh, no, do. Have you rolled the damage? It'll come up eventually. No, no, but I'll, yeah, I'll do, it do it now and then roll your, your next to hit because then we know that it's going to be. Um, and then you have. Uh, has that put your rage damage, your rage adjustment on? 1d12 plus 6. And then it's done 7 add 6. Yeah, so I've got six. Next, my, my, that's my seven damages, 1d12 plus six. 
Okay, so... So you've got another two onto that, sorry. Yeah, so, that, so that's a 15 down, yeah? Indeed, yeah. Yeah, and does that have your rage damage on it? Do you do... No, do you do... You don't do more damage when you rage. No, no, just yeah. plus two. Plus yeah, two that's it. Rage. So that's um, 50. Yeah, so do your next hit. Give me it. Come on. Oh, 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 oh. Like this. Oh, no. A 29. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Um, Does that hit? <laughs> that definitely. And let's do it. So oh, roll twice. There we go. So it's roll twice for critical, isn't it? Yeah. Um, oh, it's rubbish. Why is it not rolled twice? Oh, stupid thing. I'll just roll it again. Yeah, easiest thing to do, I think. Um, so that's 11 add... Um, so it, do I need... Four, and then you need to have four on top of that as well, yes. The two rage. Um, oh, is it just one lot of rage you get on there? Uh, just it'll just be your rage for one for one yeah. of your damage, I think. Yeah, so I'll plus two on there then. Um, so do yeah, so that would be what twenty six, yeah. Uh, that would be twenty six. Yeah. Oh yeah, you've taken a, a nasty chunk out of him, but he he he's definitely below. I'm just feet <laughs> plants apart. I'm there swinging my axe. Yeah, twice. Yeah, sure is, yeah, as he came towards you, he probably clicked you as he approached, but then <laughs> yeah. you, you released yeah. the axe. <laughs> um, oh, now let's go to something a lot more relaxed. Jennifer. Yeah, you know what? I'm trying to bring uh, some glory to my friends. And I think, one, I need to prove that that chef was wrong about me and my produce flame spell having value here. And two... <laughs> I think that Saul might get more into this combat if he could smell his enemy cooking in front of him. <laughs> he produce flame on that target there. Nice. Uh, I think this is how I roll it. Uh, well, I, I tr I'm trying to throw it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it probably hits him, but bounces off his um, his breastplate is because his yeah. armor class is 16 so you sort of like so sol you see this sort of like flame come in and sort of like hit um hit and they the captain doesn't even flinch he probably won't be able to see it through his visor uh in, in any case you know and then um my guy on the opposite side of the ship um ty from you He'll use his um, action to um, get up and his movement action to bring him back um, into um, combat um, with you, but he won't be able to hit. He doesn't have a bonus action. And that brings us... But he can see his people over the other side battling away. And and so he's quite keen, and so he sort of like stumb gets up, and then jumps across with his sword ready, and we come straight up to you, does, Ty. Um, does he need to roll to come across again? No, he doesn't. Okay. <laughs> Damn. Um, it's because he went backwards before, so that's why he had to I, roll. But this time, yeah. he, he's a nimble elf. Elves are quite nimble, I think. Uh, I, think, I mean, this uh, tie is for sure. Yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, I mean, this guy's back. So <laughs> I'll just, I'll, I'll say like, uh, what are you? Uh, did did he not learn his lesson? Does he, you know, does he not understand that he's not supposed to be here? And I'll, I'll, I'll try to do the exact same thing. Because twenty two, yeah, twenty two definitely hits. So. Um, that's six damage on that one. That, one, that also hits. Um, so that's 11 damage. Uh, bonus action. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll use my uh, my flurry of blows. 18 oh. hits. 
And is that six damage? Um, yep. Yep. Anything? And then, uh, 24. <laughs> <laughs> Which will give him another 10. He's still standing? He certainly is not. Uh, okay. <laughs> he, he is um, well and true out. So as he sort of like... The, wait, does this guy look important or... Uh, no, he just looks like the uh, okay, one yeah, to I'll, the... I'll, uh, I'll kill him then. <laughs> yeah, so... <laughs> Not anymore. He sort of, like, gets up, has his sword out, jumps back across, and what will it look like as he jumps back across into your... He's, he jumps back across and he just... He lands on, on top of my fist and... <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'll just... I'll, I'll punch him, like, four times really fast, almost faster than the eye can see in in the throat and yeah he'll just fall down on the yeah ground. he sort of like stops and he's stunned for a while yeah it, it'll look like he just jumped jumped over and then had a heart attack yeah and he just sort of like slumps to the um ground okay a uh, nice one captain's coming to hit um you sol um on his um attack rolls so Five will miss you. Why am I getting all these rolls, please? You guys are rolling so like 28 for 44, and, and mine are just... Uh, That's hack. I mean, that, was, ha! <laughs> <laughs> that hack did not work. Uh, this is one uh, attack uh, coming across. Um, that's nine points. Um, I think not. I think it's four points. Uh, is that um, slashing damage? Yeah. 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 When I'm raging, I get immunity to, I get, I get um, resistance to slashing, bludging in, and. Uh, oh, yeah. That's, yeah. So it goes down to um, four. Yeah. Four. Yeah. Nice. Sorry. It's all right. I've still got plenty more to come yet. No. I'm slowly building the monsters up, by the way. They're slowly getting harder and harder, you know. And the next one's going straight for Jennifer. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, say again, sorry. What do you say, Mr. Somebody's got to go for me. Um, well, in this one, it's, um, it's Sailor um, next who's going to um, attack. Um, so she's going to uh, multi-attack two with a scimitar and one with her dagger. Um, um, 15 doesn't um, hit um, at all. Um, second scimitar attack does hit. Um, and I think they've just done... Uh, I think that is just normal damage. It hasn't. Um, so let me just um, roll that. Uh, I'll roll that damage again in a second. And then this is her her, dag her dagger. Uh, sorry, wrong button. Oh, it'll be the same no matter what. So um, 16, which will hit. So that's going to be um, 7. And then she's got um, a 1d6. Um, plus uh, three. But, uh, right, that's nice. So that's seven, um, 22 points of damage off him. Minus 22. Um, yeah, okay then. He looks very unwell, Jennifer, from when you're standing. Um, yeah, Perry, you're hidden um, up at the top, I think, at the moment. Yeah, so um, Perry crouched down, hiding. He's going to um, he's going to reload his um, crossbow, his little hand crossbow, and then he's going to come round. Is the reload uh, a bonus action or an action? It's just part of the part of the firing. Okay, then yeah, and um, it's like drawing a weapon. Got you, yeah. And um, but I couldn't do it. I couldn't hold two and do it both because you need a, a free hand to to reload right. it. And then I'm going to come round and I'm going to look for a target to fire at, at what's there. So yeah, so all 
all the um all the astral elves are in combat um at the moment is is this what is this one here still yeah so he's in um melee combat with the um captain so they're fighting um together then okay i'll i'll fire at him do is there any um negatives for firing into combat in this game yes yeah cool was it is it just being at a disadvantage um it's a plus two to, to hit it depends on how you how you play mm. in it um you could take it that they're in um they're in half cover which would be plus two or disadvantage <laughs> Let, let's go for, um, so the plus two would be to their armor class, wouldn't it? That's what we're yeah. saying, or disadvantage. Okay, then let's uh, da, 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 see unseen attackers and targets is, um, so let, let's say that, uh, I'll check later on. So let's go to for a plus two on their armor class at the moment, and then I can check it later. Would yes. I be attacking at advantage or not? Um, yeah, go for it. So it'd be, um, but their armor class is now 18. Okay. Yeah, so how much um, damage? That's not a crit, isn't it? No, no, no that's just that's just. So that's I've got a, what I've got, se I've got two seventeens. Um, so that's nineteen points of damage. Oh, is that all together? This it's not eight, eleven. Oh, I see, just nineteen all together. Another yeah, yeah. fantastic um shot with a bolt. Um, yeah, that um kills that one, um outright, um uh, as well. Um, so, um, the lieutenants are, are out. Those have been, um, destroyed. Um, but Sol, Var, we're, we're up, up to you now. Oh, right. This puny metal thing is still alive in front of me. It certainly is. I, I, I don't want to leave it that way, so I'm going to hit it again. Nice. Oh, sorry. Can I use my um, can I use my bonus action as a cunning action to go back round? Yeah, by all means. Thank you. Okay, Solvark. Yeah, so go for it. Yep. Nice. Yeah. Damage wise, let's see if this adds on. Let's see if it does. I'm doing it through roll twenty, so I'm hoping that second one misses though. No, that that was that should have been a damage. It wasn't. It was another to hit. I think. Yeah, it was because you rolled a d20. It was a one. Ooh. So roll your damage for the first one. So if you click on... I thought I did do. You just have to... Uh, the, these are to hit. These are to <laughs> yeah. hit. You know, are, you, are you clicking on the great axe plus two at the bottom? Yeah, it, I'll, I'll go back to beyond. Let let me just so it oh. work it works for me. So can you see? You see it says twenty two and twenty four, and then underneath it says great axe plus two. When you hover over oh, it, right. gotcha. it should go to red, and then you can you can roll it, and then this automatically puts your um, rage on. Can you see? It says two yeah. for rage, and then your ten. Um, so. Does that put your plus two axe on as well? Because you you rolled a one d twelve plus four. Which, see, plus, plus two plus two, isn't it? Um, Is that right? It says plus four strength. What's your strength mod? Uh, my strength is. I'm going back to beyond. Here we go. Uh, my strength is four. Yeah. So that's not putting the plus two because it rolled um it rolled a 1d12 and added four yep. so that's your strength bonus 
there's two for your rage there, but it hasn't added on the plus two for your magical weapon, I don't think. Right. So it'd be 14 altogether, yeah? Yep. Um, yeah. Weird, yeah. Um, so that's it. So that's your first attack. So you'll have a, a second attack, yeah? Yep, yep, sorry. Um, I thought I was going to take one of the other ones as a second attack, make me fail. No, uh, because we were trying to roll damage. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, there we go. So that's my second. You might, attack. and that, that will hit. So now you can just hit the damage button at the bottom. Yeah. Oh. Uh, and then 14, 15, 16. Yeah. Yep. Cool. And that um, nicely kills. Oh. So, as this thing again, hit him. Yeah, tell me. Hit him again. Um, Solvar is, is just going to take a step back, lean really far back with his axe, and then swing it once, and it'll clang off the, off the body. Nice. And he'll do a back cut and take off an arm. <laughs> <laughs> One watching watch crumble to the floor certainly does crumble to the floor. Okay, I'm going to. Uh, sorry, um, Jennifer, is there anything you would like to do on seven? Yes, I uh, seeing it, this person crumple or the self crumple to the floor. I'm going to do what I was going to do last time and try and cook this enemy for my my friend to. Yeah, go for it. You can do it. It's a little half-hearted now because he's on the ground. But... <laughs> you can do it still. You can still do it. Nailed him. <laughs> I, I have just scrolled. Oh, yes, you did. Yeah. Very well done. Um, yeah, you sort of like find a, a chink in his armor. I think um, Sol, Solval cut a, a limb off. It was his arm, yes. I yeah. So, so you cut that off and then you cauterize it with your flame as, it, as you um, fire it into it. But it does set him alight and it does do some damage. And they sort of like, he sort of like slumps um, to the the floor. Um, yeah. And the last lieutenant is dead. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to clear this turn order. Okay, because we we finish, and then we know that it's ready for the the next one. Um, right. Yes. Now the the next question, of course, is what do you want to do? Um, because there's something else as well that you um suddenly notice. Um. So over on the dark moth, um, still, um. The dark moth is still attached to your um, to the moon dancer, but you can see on on the on board the ship some um, creatures that seem to be um, busy, almost like as crew members. That that's what they they look like. And I'm going to share um, you a, a picture. Um, of them, I'm going to pop it into your. Okay, so you, you should be able to um, see it now. That's peculiar. Um, yeah, they seem to be. Um, I forget what they're called. Hang on, because I've just. Um... It's it's supposed to be balancing on a mop, right? Not like um, flying. Yeah, yeah, they they don't have um, um they do have the capacity to glide. Um, they can actually glide, so it's a bit like a flying fox. Um, so Hadazis maybe is how we can pronounce it. Um, they do look like they're more um ship crew rather than um any. It doesn't look like there are elves um, at all. Um, but you do look like they have daggers on them as their belt. But these were the people who were trying to fire the um, trebuchet as they pulled to the end. And, and now they look a little bit 
um, in disarray. It, it appears that, you know, their leaders have just been wiped out and they're sort of like uh, looking around. They're sort of like thinking, what do we do um, now? They've stopped messing with the um, trebuchet. They're not touching that anymore. Yeah. Um, Captain, I think we've got another ship that's ours. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah, and she sort of like um, looks looks across at it and sort of like says, "What? What? Are, what? What about their their crew?" Well, I, I think they're like any crew, just waiting for orders by looks of them. And he, she sort of like um, looks a, a, around, and there's a, a slight puzzlement. Um, on her face and could you make intelligent checks please uh, the DC is going to be 15 why make this oh my Every, god everybody yeah yes yeah damn just <laughs> intelligent enough uh, am i the only person uh, and and you uh, and perry and you so you know i have a minus two intelligence there's <laughs> only perry that has a plus intelligence yeah. um yeah. you solva and perry you suddenly almost like get um, a flashback um, to your guided tour of the ship and you remember that your ship has flapjack and it seems that you've killed three people there seems to be these this random crew but your question is still who is piloting the... Who's doing the spell jamming? Hmm. Well, there has to be somebody still at the helm and steering the thing because they can't have parked up, run from the steering wheel place to here really, really fast. I mean, Correct. Surely they wouldn't just let the ship drop, right? So... I think it's safe to get on and try to like figure out where their pilot is. Oh, I can't believe there's only three elves on there. Arrogant to the last they are. Perry Clears is he, he's he's looked at the, the situation and he says, sure, surely we should we should cut the ship loose. They, they, they were only following orders. They, they, they're not they're not to blame. It's obvious, well, to me that these these other ones were probably the ones instigating it all. They're obviously not hostile, otherwise they, they would have attacked. But what, maybe... what are your opinions, Captain? Um she sort of like says um she sort of like says, well, she says uh, Can you fly that thing? She points um, to you. She doesn't look like she wants the um, Hadazi to actually fly it. She's almost like saying, you know, if you want it, who's going to spell jam it, so to speak? Um, does So I think you said the ship kind of resembles the same stuff we saw down at the, at the world? It certainly does, well remembered. Yeah, so um, Tai definitely wants to you know investigate the ship and see if if there's any information to be found about what happened yeah um nice so is it a plan that you um want to go onto the ship um well i mean we've been traveling together okay. for a while so i know pericles is kind of the, the intelligent one of the group so <laughs> he'll go up to pericles and sort of you know inter like tell him about his Plan like there's a, there's an obvious link here between these ships. I think maybe they know what happened when we were 
back down on is it is it Earth? Is that what we call it? Yeah, you can call it. Um, yeah, when we were back on Earth, so you know maybe they know more about what happened and who did this and who we need to go to and who we need to punch to get our revenge. Mm. Is, is that what we're after? Revenge? I mean, that's what I'm after. All right, Re revenge. <laughs> 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 that was so funny. <laughs> oh, oh, gosh. Oh, dear. Is, is that not what we do? I mean, aren't we heroes? Aren't we supposed to take down the people who attacked our planet? It looks shiny inside, though, doesn't it? I wonder what other shiny things are in there. And the planet's fine. My family's fine. They live in a mountain. They'll be fine. Well, I, I'm, I'm not too sure about that, but I, I hope you're right. So I hope you're right. Sorry, Lord Soul. My, my, yeah. <laughs> my Lord and Savior. Um, actually, Ty doesn't need to be saved. Um, so are you going across to the ship or not? Uh, so I mean, I will, I will listen to Pericles, but I, I want to. Or Ty wants to. Okay. If, if people are going across, and Pericles will um, will will go to investigate it all. I suppose that we we could say that we were making sure that it was clear of any of the hostiles that that could attack the um, the um, the Moon Dancer. Okay, so um, um, Ty's going across. Then Perry, are you going yep. across as well? Yeah, I'll 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 back I'll back them up. Yeah. Um Saul, are you going across and Jennifer, are you going across? Yeah, try and stop me. Yeah. Um so um I'm not a bad friend. Um two things that are going to happen um as you go over. Well, three things. The first thing is that the Hadazis um almost like um back away from you. I mean, one of you is six foot tall and they've seen Ty. You uh, just repel borders um, again and again. So they sort of like um, huddle together and sort of like keep out of your way. Um, they can speak common. So when we come next week, um, because we nearly finished the session tonight, you'll be able to question them if you wish. So that's the first thing. Um, the second thing that you see is um, you actually open um, a door, a cabin door that goes below deck. And as you open it, you see one of these um, astral elves finish an incantation. And you he's not actually dressed in armor. He's dressed in robes and his face is uncovered and it looks like he's been um, spell casting. And just as you came round, um, open the door, he um, completes his spell and almost like um, with a, a click of his fingers, he disappears. He literally disappears. Um, there's a slight shimmer in the air, a bit like a heat haze, um, that sort of like effect, but it's almost momentarily it's there, but he um, then seems to be no longer um, on the dark moth at all. Perfectly uh, just wants to pull the one that he got from the, the last adventure from his, from his belt and expend a charge to see whether or not he picks up the person in the room who wants to use to detect magic. Um, yeah. So um, you can, you detect magic in the room. There, there's no magic there um, at all. It doesn't look like. He's disappeared. He hasn't gone invisible. He's, he's. Yeah. The, the yeah there's, there's no magic there um, at all. Um, but the final thing that you had um is something, Ty, that you probably were searching for. Because in the Dark Star's cargo hold, it is packed 
with at least a hundred um, astral seeds. And these look like the meteorites that were falling to the ground before the crystal vines actually took over the, the planet. It looks like you have probably found the ship and maybe the people who actually has very, very recently destroyed all of your planets. And that seems to be a good point to leave it for this week. Well done, everyone. We'll pick it up next time. So if you'd like to consider certain things, you've got the um, you've got the um, Hazardine to um, Hazardine to think about what you're going to do with them. You've also got uh, another ship that seems to be here. Just to let you know, the spell jamming helm is um, in there. Um, so it looks like the person who disappeared um, might have been the spell jammer. Uh, but that didn't show up magical, did it? No. It, Say again, sorry? Did that show up magi magical or not? Oh, sorry. I thought you just wanted to look for the person. So, yeah, I mean, the, okay. the, no, no, the spell jammer um, seat will um, show up magical um, as well. Um, but the, um, the the rest of the room, there's no um, magical um, items or anything there um, at all. Um, so, yeah. Uh, is this room, like, adjacent to the deck? Because I, I will check, like, real quick if we're still floating because, you know, our, our pilot is gone. So Yeah, the, the ships, so even when they're not spell jamming, they just remain stationary. They don't okay. um, drop or, or anything like that. So don't worry. You're not so <laughs> like suddenly <laughs> plummeting. <laughs> no! <laughs> uh, as it goes. And plus it is attached to the moon dancer as well. Uh, when yeah, they, It's much bigger. So maybe we're... Yeah, you'll, you'll get pulled down with it. So yes, yeah, so some, um, some um, information, um, some ideas to, think about right. there but we will start off um the next adventure um exactly where we are um to decide what to do with the ship um the crew and anything else that we've we need to uh f finalize before we go on to the next stage thank you to um spoiler who's just raided the channel um, um thank you uh, and welcome um all, uh, yeah, uh, yes, um, hi, um, Despy, it's lovely to see you, and Dankness as well, and Spoiler, and anybody else. Thank you, we're just finished, we're just coming to the end of the stream, so thank you so much for coming on. Uh, and proper there as well, if there's something I would do, it's to ruffle all the bearded men's beards. Well, that's me getting ruffled. Uh, Mr. Pickles does have a beard, but his cab is not working. So you're getting ruffled as well, Mr. Pickles. Oh, dear. <laughs> I, I, I trimmed mine and I feel sad now. <laughs> yeah, you should have let it grow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, brilliant. So thank you for coming along and watching us this week. Welcome. We've That's part two of the adventure done. And we'll be picking up part three next time we play which hopefully will be next saturday but i will be streaming again tomorrow morning at nine o'clock gmt time with some minecraft and then one o'clock in the afternoon with some elder scrolls online and then um medivac the healing hoover yes thank you i have a call of cthulhu monday night at quarter past seven and next Thursday is our Dungeons and Dragons campaign where we go through a lithid mine. I uh, it was I really enjoyed watching it um, uh, on on Thursday. There's some really interesting characters in in your. <laughs> yep. That's all I'll say. That's all I'll say. But well worth um, a, a watch, and I'm learning so much with. Is it Zed? Zed, yeah. Yeah, Zed, your your GM. As good as you don't kill me. 
Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, um, that is well worth um, looking at. Anybody else have any other announcements before we leave? I do. Oh, yes. Yeah. I finally published a podcast that I've been making with a friend. I took that personally. It's on Spotify right now, but it's kind of hard to find. You have to look for the episode name. I don't know Spotify. It's also on Anchor. Um, That's a free software, Anchor. Yes. Um, uh, what's it called? It's called And I Took That Personally. Um, it's just me and my friend Brad. We talk about movies and discuss them into great detail and obsess about them and take things too personally. Um, the first episode's about scary stories to tell in the dark, and I found that that's the easier way to find the podcast at this point if you're looking on Spotify to look for the episode name. Uh, what's the episode name? Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. It's the first movie that we tackle. Stories to tell in the dark. Oh, yeah, I've got it. Um, let me share it. I, oh, oh, no. Hang on. Is this, it says... Um, Oh, no, that's not it. Zombie Diaries. Yeah, if you can send me a link, and then I'll post it in the, in the chat. Where's the link coming to? Um, I'll send it over Discord. Okay, brilliant. Thank you. And then I can post it in the chat. I wonder how you can send something over. I'm going to send it by email to Discord, and then it's by WhatsApp. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um don't have anything at the moment and here we go here it goes there you go uh right here is the the link um oh hang on let me do both of those and then that's the link for anchor and um spotify so if you're interested in um seeing some uh, listening to some good chatter um, and I've also put it in the Discord um, as oh, well. Brilliant. So, Thank you very much. so do go along and have a listen and join Mr. Pickles and Brad. <laughs> yes. <laughs> cool. Cool. It doesn't say Mr. Pickles, but that's fine. It doesn't. <laughs> no. So do go and check that out if you're a movie buff, or even if you're not movie buff. If it's if Mr. Pickles is in it, then it'll be good. Um, that's it <laughs> end of uh, story okay then thank you so much anybody else want to say anything anything yeah thank you da, 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 da. <laughs> bum, bum, ching. I'm, just, uh, I'm gonna retreat into the woods and just meditate there for seven days <laughs> yeah. from the trauma that I went <laughs> yeah and the, your foot in a bucket <laughs> yeah. that's, that's the plan you'll, you'll be and I'll see you again next week yeah you'll be dancing around a, a, a fairy glen or something like yeah. that for a while oh, and I'm probably gonna practice that move that the the, the crew is doing with the, the broomstick that seems like a, a fun mock oh, yeah <laughs> that that would be fantastic so brilliant so we will see you all next time or in our other streams throughout the week thank you so much for coming along and supporting us we really do appreciate it and until next time it's goodbye for me goodbye and it's goodbye from them goodbye goodbye (laughs) and i have to remember now to put this up